Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbi wa sallim. Yes, alhamdulillah once again you are welcome to another wonderful episode of Juma Mubarak on Comedian TV. Yeah, and it's been a while. I'm so sorry something that I came up. But afterwards, today I have something special to actually, you know, replace this disc. So yes, today you know what it is, it's TGIF and that means it time for our friday rituals yes it's friday once again that means it's a very special day for we muslims to go out in unison to pray in our central mass but before going you know what i do tell you guys there's this for you to have certain things in mind and then please number one ensure to have your ritual bath make sure you clean um you shave or you keep your beard neat yes we know it's feeling kind of run put anything nice try to keep it neat afterwards there's need for you to you know put any perfume that's for the male for the females there's need for you to dress smart dress nicely and ensure that you are that you look moderate yes it's very 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 important you look moderate and you look modest so yes afterwards once you get to oh sorry once you leave your arms and you are going to the masjid make sure you say supplications say as cars see it um to slim so every muslim you meet on the way and ensure that you smile because it's what it's sinna so yes ensure that you dress well that's for both male and female afterwards once you get to the masjid please ensure to sit close um sit at a very close range to the imam so you can listen to what is being said please and um, please let us try to avoid backbiting or side talks is very very bad so you can certainly listen to whatever the um imam is saying and you can actually you know learn one or two things afterwards ensure that um you recite Surah to the calf. Yes, yes, Surah to the calf. Please and please just try to read Surah to the calf because it is very important. Yes, so as I was saying, today I have something very special for you. Yes, today we're talking about preparation for Ramadan. Yes, Allahumma Baligna Ramadan. It's Ramadan, it's Ramadan, it's Ramadan. I've been being a Muslim. You know, being a Muslim, it's special and beautiful in a way. Yes, Friday, as I said, is also very important. Yes. But then when it comes to Ramadan, I'm like, that's just it for me. Like, Ramadan is like the best month out of all the other lunar months. And aside from that, it's 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 a month when we can actually, you know, get more involved in Ibadah, get more involved in things that will actually, you know, get us running or get us good rewards and also do things that would, you know, make us close out to Almighty Allah. So yes, as I did say, Ramadan is not just any other month, definitely the time for us to, you know, um help the needy more time for us to you know um wake up in the um in the midnight to do tajud to pray on my talal to ask for forgiveness and to you know um pray for whatever stuff we want because this is a particular one that my teller has promised to answer all our prayers and want to do the things that we have been asked to do yes and things that are being done in this ramadan like praying waking up for tajud if one continues with it, definitely that will make us better Muslims. So we can say this month is a month to make us better Muslims, to make us closer to Almighty Allah, and also a month for us to get more rewards, get all the things we've been praying for, and likewise um, give out more to those who are in need. So yes, um, after saying all this, there's a need for me to actually um, bring my guests on the show, but it's actually an outside this thing. Yeah, so from this, I would like you guys to listen to my interview with the Muadim of Arishikala Monks. I like G Abdul Rashid Adebayo who actually gave us more insight on preparation for Ramadan. Alright, so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today on the program, um, Juma Mubarak, we have a very special guest. But before I go into that, let me just give you a short something about our guest. Yes, our guest is Alaji Rashid Adebayo, who is the mother of Arishi Kolamox here in Ibadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alright, so today on the program, we're talking about preparation for Ramadan. But before then, I mean, let me just talk a little bit about Ramadan. Obviously, when Ramadan is a very special month in every um, particular month. I mean, in all the months, Ramadan is like the best. It's every month, the particular month whereby we Muslims come out, gather, we um, observe this uh, month in um, unification, in purity, and definitely in unity. So definitely, we know that this month is not just any month, but it's a very special month for us. But then let me actually give you the old glimpse about this month because I have someone to tell you more about that. So, sir, um, 
definitely you know that Ramadan is um, not just any month for we Muslims, obviously, and it's not just a month where we can just you know do whatever we like. I feel like Ramadan is like the most sacred month ever. I mean, you see people who oh, uh, are they let me actually say they are not okay, but then they try tries to stay sane during this particular month. So um, I would like to ask the first question: that what does Ramadan signify to the Ummah in entirety? What does Ramadan mean to everybody? Uh, Ramadan to every Muslim, it's not even to the only Muslims, to both Muslims and non-Muslims all over the world. They see Ramadan as uh, one of the blessed months, if we count the twelfth month Allah gave to the Muslims, from Muharram to the Hijjah. We all believe that Ramadan serves as one of the best months that a servant of Allah worship Allah most and uh, deserve all our deed and uh, good to that month. Actually, when you see people saying, talking about Ramadan, you see them preparing one way or the yeah. other, gathering together, we are going to celebrate Ramadan. Actually, when you see all those things, you still think and you know, sit down that why people, even though the non Muslims, they will still be, you know, greeting the Muslims, saying, ah, how is your Ramadan? Yeah. You are welcoming Ramadan. We are going to, you know, celebrate the Ramadan with you. It has been as one of the holy months Definitely. for the Muslims and the blessed month for the uh, both Muslims and non-Muslim. Allah yeah. says in the Quran, uh, Shahru Ramadan, Shahru Mubarak, Shahru Rahma. It is a month of blessing, a month of mercies, yeah. a month of uh, a lot of bounty from Allah. So that's what I can say about that. Okay, um, speaking on the Adid and the Quran, uh, I know there was, there's a part in the Quran that says, um, Yeah, you are living in Amunu, Kutuba Alikum Siam, Kama Kutuba Alan Living, Ami Koblikum La Alakum Tetakun. Definitely, this month is a month whereby every Muslim is meant to do it in accordance to the way it's being done by the people be, um, before us. So, I can you give us like a glimpse of how it was being done before, like how people prepare for Ramadan before now? I mean, some people these days just fast, like. It's a normal thing, fine, it's a special month, but according to what we've heard before, there is a way they actually prepare, like these, these Sabbaths before us, there is a way they prepare for Ramadan whenever it's coming. So can you give us like some little things about the prepare Ramadan? Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Actually, we cannot uh, say how does those before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prepare for the Ramadan. Allah says in the Quran, like you rightly quoted, in Quran uh, 2 verse 183, Allah says, Ya you are Ladina Amanu Kutiba Ali Kum Siam, Kama Kutiba Allah Ladina Min Koblikum La Allah Kum Taktakum. Allah said, Oh, you who believe, we've prescribed for you yeah. fasting in the month of Ramadan, as, as, as it has been done for those before you. Yeah. We were told from the Surah of Islam that uh, people before us, Allah instructed them to uh, fast. The picture of how they fast, we might not be able to, you know, see it. Just that the prophet said so they the are said. fasting before uh, we are ordained to fast in the month of Ramadan. Okay. Then, when uh, Allah sent Muhammad so down to Allah us, Allah. Allah gave us that uh, uh, laws that uh, that we should fast for the whole month of Ramadan, which starts as the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. How does the Sahaba prepare for Ramadan? From the sun at it, we were told that they usually prepare for the Ramadan for a whole year. Huh. A whole year. Meaning that the first six months, they will be begging Allah to see the new month of Ramadan. Okay. The prayer of Allah Mabalagna Ramadan, okay. Allah Mabalagna Ramadan, that is what they usually say. They will be praying, praying to Allah that, oh Allah, let us see the next. Ramadan. Ramadan yeah. So we were told that the following six months, they would divide the year into two. The following six months, they will be begging Allah to accept all their good deed mm -hmm. that they did in Ramadan. So from the reliable source of hadith, they prepare a whole year for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So don't, you know, it's not like our new generation now that when you see people, people will not even prepare for Ramadan until like a month. Yeah. You know, sometimes they go, people don't even see counting the month of Ramadan. They will just say, um, Ramadan will come, Ramadan will come. And yeah. at the end of the day, when we heard that uh, they've cited the moon, people will now be saying, ha, why is it now convincing? Why is it not that they've cited? Because people are not in particular to other months. Yeah. So they don't prepare at all. But the like of the Sahaba, they prepare a whole year. Six months before Ramadan, they are praying to Allah to say the new Ramadan, the next Ramadan. 
and after that Ramadan, they will be praying to Allah to accept their good deed. So the Sahaba, the companions, they prepare a way for Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I mean, I mean like, you might tell us, I know we are not kind of perfect, but because we can never be perfect like the Sahabas, but we should just try to be, you know, closer to something that, like they've done, we should just Where, where, where the, the, Allah has blessed us to see their samples no. uh, from the hadith of the prophet no, uh, Allah, uh, the prophet said I left you with al-islam limashi laylua kadaria I left you with the islam that is moving okay. laylua kanaria the night of islam is like the the day so there is no hidden thing in islam and the companions, they ask the prophet, all we need to know today, all we need to know today about Islam. And Alhamdulillah, at the last uh, sermon of the prophet, the last age he did, he gave a message to the companion. Yeah. And he prayed that day. He said, I pray that those that they did not see me understand this message more than those you that you have seen me. Mm -hmm. So we are very hopeful and we are on that faith yeah. that Inshallah, our fasting, our mode of practicing Islam will look like that of the Swaba. Mm -hmm. Though Allah said in Surah al Waqiyah, mm -hmm. that's Asabikuna Asab. Yes. Asabikuna al Awalun. They are the first, and you know, they've gathered all the rewards. Mm -hmm. But we pray that we still be on their channel. Mm -hmm. In the Surah Al Bayina, Allah said, Rodi Allah anihum waradu anihum. Mm -hmm. They are pleased with me. They are pleased with the laws, the rules, the regulation of the prophet. And Allah too is pleased with them. But we don't have that uh, grace the Sahaba had with uh, the prophet. But hopefully, inshallah, if we follow all what they put down, the teaching of the prophet, of the, uh, the, 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 the fourth caliph after the prophet, I, we are very hopeful that we'll be on their own channel too. All right, so now let's move on to the next one, which are, what are the benefits of Ramadan? I know some people feel like, okay, when you fast, ah, I'll lose weight. Some go, ah, it's very good for, you know, lots of weight, it's very good for it. I'm like, do we actually have other good things that we can actually see? Because Ramadan is not just about you just starving yourself, or you trying to lose weight, or you trying to just, you know, save your money from the junks and all. So I'm like, we need to actually talk about the benefits of Ramadan itself. Well, the benefit of Ramadan cannot be mentioned. It's only if we are looking at the material gain. Okay. In terms of it wisely, we've had some of our medical doctors that uh, most especially those in uh, diabetics patients that they advise them to fast. Let me be sincere with you. The teaching of the prophet has been put in place to manage the health of everybody. Let me give you an instance. If you fast Monday and Thursday, you fast the 13, 14, 15. There is tendency that there will be a low, a low sugar in your body. Are you getting it? And the fat too will also be reducing. But we're not talking about the the advantages of the uh, the eight advantage or the material gain. Most especially the benefit of Ramadan. It is if you are able to fast yeah. as Allah prescribed. You are leaving the fast to be among those that are last forgiven and the Jannah, it is the reward for whoever fast as the Prophet and Allah prescribed. Allah says, if you fast as you have been prescribed to, to fast, there will be a gain in the day of, a gate in the day of Yama Likiyama. No one will enter that through that gate to Jannah except those who fast. And that gate is being called Bab Royal. So the most benefit of Ramadan is that we are going to enter al Jannah if we are being forgiven. Now let's come back to the, what are the material gain? People used to say maybe uh, we have a savings, but it is not like that. In Ramadan, you, you know, you have, you have to keep more spending, not only on your own family, not only on yourself, but what about those of your brother in Islam? Okay. So, act wisely. People might be saying, "Yo, oh, I will lose weight, I will lose all this. No, you are trying to maintain. You see, Ramadan has come to manage for us our health mm -hmm. and how we expect the Muslims to use the other following month. Okay. So, not, so the, the major benefit of it is that you are leaving that Ramadan to be one of the most pious persons on earth and to gain the 
paradise of Allah. Huh. You might tell me because what of this that will gain the paradise. I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, um, there's another one that I really want to talk about. Now, it's enough that we are fasting and it's enough that we are trying to, you know, be pious and the like. But what are the spiritual things that we, that we need to actually focus more on during Ramadan? Well, that will, you know, that question will lead me to say that how do we prepare for Ramadan? Okay. Uh, you know, when you see people saying they are preparing for Ramadan, today if you go to Ogunpa or Agbeni or most of our Ibadan markets, you see people buying milk, yeah. buying rice. <laughs> that is their own preparation. You see people say, ah, how am I going to, you know, where can I get this? Where can I get chicken? We want to start our Ramadan with chicken. I could remember when we were so young, the moment we see that Ramadan is coming, we see our father buying yam. You know, ah, we are going to eat father the yam the first night of Ramadan. That shouldn't be. Preparing for Ramadan takes a four cardinal preparation. Okay. We have, number one, we have the spiritual preparation. We have uh, the health preparation. We have financial preparation. Then we have social preparation. Okay. Now let me start with that, number one of the spiritual preparation. The spiritual preparation has to do with preparing yourself. How would you be close to God? Yeah. A year ago, someone fast in the month of Ramadan and it, he, or he could not finish a whole Quran. It means he did not prepare to meet Allah with that good deed. So when Ramadan is coming, we expect every Muslims, those that they have not been reading Quran, to go into it, learn about Quran. Because in Ramadan, we want them, Allah says, Ramadan is Shahrul, uh, the month of Quran. Yeah. He said, in the month of Ramadan, we send down what? We send down the Quran. So we want every Muslims, you know, to be more committed to how we are going to be close to God. And how can that be done? It is by reading His words. Yeah. So when you are reading Quran, you are communicating with Allah. Number two, Adhkar the remembrance of Allah, yeah, the yeah. beautiful words that the Prophet has taught us yeah, to be residing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Then the uh, Tasbih by say SubhanAllah, in one of Hadith that uh, some of the, uh, the Sahaba, they went to the Prophet and they said, yeah. the rich, they took the old reward from Allah, they pray as we pray. And they still give of, of, out of what Allah has given to them as a Sadaqah. But we, the poor, we don't have what to give yeah. as Sadaqah. And the prophet said, okay, let me give you something. When you say subhanallah, you are doing sadaqah. When you say alhamdulillah, it's a sadaqah. When you say Allah Akbar, sadaqah. When you say la ilaha illallah, it's a sadaqah. And the most funny thing of that, that it, the prophet said, when you are with your wife, enjoying yourself, it's a sadaqah. And the companions laugh. Uh, we are with our wives, you know, we are enjoying it. And the prophet said, yes, because if you are doing it in a wrong way, they will be writing the bad deed for you. Yeah. So we have to increase ourselves in that devotion. Yeah. Not only the reading of the Quran, the kind of optional noah feel, praying, you pray dua before dhur, you make sure, not that uh, a Muslim will target when are they praying, yeah. because I'm tired. Let me watch film. No, we are not expecting Muslims to do that in the month of Ramadan. Spiritually, we want us to prepare reading Quran from time to time, doing adhkar, tasbih, you know, observing no feel. Often and often, often and often. To the end of the Ramadan, I used to tell people that Ramadan, it is not a month of relaxing. It is not the month that you take a leave, let me have a rest. No, it is a month of work. That we want to work and gain the paradise of Allah. I will tell you at the end of the, the interview why we have to work. Then we have to look at the ex uh, benefit of it. The ex benefit of it is when you fast, like I said earlier, that the 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 sugar contained in your body will be you know will be reduced. Yeah. But before we prepare for that, those uh, those are their usher uh, usher patient. They have to consult their doctor. Yes, look yes. for their medication. Someone that is having one ailment or the other, we expected them to go to the doctor, give them their medication that they will be using maybe in the morning and the afternoon. So they have to prepare to know that, ah, please, my brother, my sisters, I can't fast, you know, I'm battling with this. Sickness or ailment that can be managed. So they will take that as an excuse. So they have to prepare 
for that as well too. And number three, we talked about the financial. Is that one has to do with money? <laughs> you know, it shouldn't be uh, myself, myself. Yeah. You know, in Ramadan we expect sodako. In fact, in Ramadan we spend more than when, what we spend in when we are not in Ramadan yeah. because you want to have you know eat a beautiful food for your saul, eat a beautiful something for your iftar. Uh, if I'm eating rice, let there be egg, let there be meat, let there be, unlike if there's no matter if I don't eat egg today, I will yeah. eat egg tomorrow. So financially, we have to prepare. Think of others, assist others, those that they cannot, you know, have their soul. We also have to prepare for them as well. Then the social uh, aspect of it is that people must think that we are fasting in us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Know that when we keep moving, that is, ah, it's because it's fasting, don't move closer. No, people must see that, that it's like, this malam has changed. He's doing good these days. Look at him. He said we should try to make our environment good. It's like, this Ramadan is telling him to be good. So they have to see that goodness in us that we are fasting in Ramadan. Know that when Ramadan coming, we'll now be moody to everybody in our society. No, 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 no. We have to increase in our goodness to people, be kind to our everybody in people. Because say, Allah said in Surah Al Moral, Khairun Ummat Ukhrijat Linas, you are the best nation of the Huma. The Tamaruna Bil Maruf, Wana Yuan in Munkar. We'll be telling people to do good, I will be forbidding them to do bad. Okay, so now speaking on the bad, because I actually have two questions, but I think this is just my okay. reason. You're thinking of the other time about someone who has also but then has to manage it. We know somebody that cannot actually fast. Not like they cannot fast, but then they are like in the uh, Bible on sick bed and the likes. How can these people do something that would um, probably also give them the rewards of Ramadan? Allah said that in the Surah Al Baqarah that I quoted, uh, verse 184. He said, if you, cannot, if you are a traveler, you can live your fast. If you are sick, you can live your fast as well. Okay. Number one, two ways they can do that is, is either they live their fast and they feed their, they, Allah said in that verse is that feed their, they will feed yeah. those that they are fasting. Or they live their fast and when they are okay, do they will there. fast their, the, the missed wound. Okay. Alright, so now let me move on to the last one. Okay. We're thinking about the benefits of Ramadan. Okay. What are things that we have to move away, like shy away from like the don'ts of Ramadan? Like, things you are not even meant to even do, you know, in Ramadan. Well, well, I used to tell people that um, Ramadan has come to, you know, mold our other months for us. And when we are saying we are fasting, we are doing two or three things. Number one, abstinence from eating. Yeah. And uh, Closing of our mouth from all evil talk. Evil talk, evil talks. Our eyes mm -hmm. has to be down. You know, looking so something that is haram. Everything that is not bad, we expected Muslim to go away with it. Okay. The evil talk should not come come out from our mouth. Looking at something that is not bad should not be a thing of other day. We cannot, you know, uh, oversight that we we might not be able to see and uh, unforeseen something, God forbid bad thing, I'm going and I see a woman naked. First sight, Allah forgive us. If you look again. <laughs> if you look again, there is, a, there, 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 is, there, there is a reward for bad deed. So we have to, you know, pack ourselves away yeah. from all this. Anything that is going to implicate uh, us to, you know, uh, increase us doing bad thing, we just have to move away from it. Mm -hmm. And that is why they say that when we are fasting and, you know, people are, channel us to uh, doing it, say something that is bad or say, ah, uh, you can, can't you look at this and you know that what they ask you to look, it is not good. You have to tell them that I am fasting. Mm. So I don't look at that thing. I look at how this person is talking to you. Can't you slap him? No, I am fasting. I don't fast when I'm fasting. Um, I don't fight when I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. So every bad thing, we just have to move us every way. And people have to see that in us that ah, it's like this Ramadan is trying to remove our attitude and our behavior towards our God and towards everybody. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to say like, please, you know, like, I'm going to say like, I'm going to say like, thank you very much. I'm really, really glad I actually could have this uh, yeah, particular time. Let's to God. So, they said you should stop looking for our trouble. Please, I'm, please, I'm fasting. Nobody should look for my arm. Hey, it's not funny. Because I just be like, since they already said that, anytime somebody wants to, you know, make you do something by saying you're fasting. 
all right with this you'll be rounding up and we are saying do well to fast yes get prepared even if it is within a short uh, moment and yes do not forget to allow more by looking out ramadan and yeah we might allow forgive all our sins in this ramadan i mean because better muslims this ramadan and make our life and preserve our lives for the coming ramadan so with this i'll be saying assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh alaikum salam Alright, so you've listened to those wonderful advice and how we can actually prepare for Ramadan from our distinguished um, guest. So please let us uh, try to, you know, follow the advice, follow the right procedures and ensure that this Ramadan is actually one of the best and from this best can actually get more, you know, more better Ramadans. Yes, because if you actually ensure that we do things that are being asked to do, definitely you can follow this stuff. Uh, follow this pattern and then work more on our upcoming Ramadans. I pray my dear Allah accept all our prayers. May He forgive all our sins. May He make us witness this Ramadan that's so near and may He make us witness more Ramadans on earth in good life and sound health. So, with this, I'll be saying, Takum Law Khan for you all for listening. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our pages, our um, videos on our pages at Crimedian TV on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook yes and youtube very very important don't forget cream radio and tv on twitter instagram youtube and facebook yes don't forget to drop your comments by putting your likes and shares what is i was saying assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh